Here we have a new 2025 Cadillac CT4. This CT4 comes in the sport trim level in Black Raven. And then we have the jet black with jet black accent, leather red interior. For the powertrain, we get a two liter turbocharged four cylinder made into an eight speed automatic transmission. And to the front end here, we get our LED headlamps along with LED daytime running lights. Love the mesh grill you get with the sport. And even though it didn't get the update that we got on the 25 CT5, still kind of competes in terms of small sports cars. Down here, these are 18 inch satin graphite alloy wheels. Love the look of those. We get passive keyless entry on all four doors. Memory seat functions here, power door locks, Bose sound system. We have our power mirrors. We have blind spot monitors in those. And then we do have electronic rear window lock and child lock. So we don't have to manually activate the child locks for each side. One touch automatic up and down windows for the front, express down for the back, trunk release, electronic parking brake. Manual tilt and telescoping steering wheel. Here's the power driver's seat. We do get four-way power lumbar support there. And then we have our thigh support as well. That's manual. But a big thank you to Cadillac of Murfreesboro for allowing me to review this CT4 today. I'll leave a link below in the description. And if you're looking to get the best price on one of these in your area, click that link down below. It takes a minute to fill out your information. I'll make sure the local dealers are fighting to get you a best price, the best price on a CT4. Now the space back here is limited. It's always been like this. This is a, a small car, but there's your leg room there. Seat back pockets are on both sides. Rear AC vents, 12 volt. And then the middle seat folds down and you have bottle holders there. And you can kind of see, make your own assumption of the roof line in terms of the rear passenger space. Now to the back end here, we do get LED tail lamps, which are nice. Dual exhaust there. It actually has a nice grunt to it, I think. And then the release from the back is right there. And actually pretty good trunk space for such a small vehicle. And then we have a side pocket there. If you want to have stuff in the back, you don't want it to roll around. And then we do have additional storage there. Now to fold the seat down, I'll show you that here momentarily. All you have to do is pull right here. That'll fold flat and then pretty easy to get it back into place. The only thing is you have to kind of do it yourself. There's not a little clip or anything to put the seat belt there. And then here's our front passenger seat, same power adjustability, that same thigh support there, lockable glove compartment with owner's manuals. And then just a quick look at the window sticker. This little glare there, but should be able to see pretty well. 46,140 is the sticker price. And there are your fuel economy numbers. But as we come back around to the front, just a quick look in the engine bay, two liter turbocharged four cylinder. Let's go ahead and hop in the driver's seat. So leather wrapped steering wheel here. If you can heat that, the function's right there. I like the feel and look of the steering wheel. There's the horn sound. Now over here to the radio, we do get AM, FM, XM, along with Bluetooth audio. And then we have Apple CarPlay, Android Auto compatibility, built-in navigation system, dual zone automatic climate control. So those are there on the screen. And then we have the actual buttons down here below. And then you also get the three-stage heated front seats as well. And then in your settings here, you can change your language and you have access to the rear seat reminder, buckle to drive and teen driver. Backup cameras there, guidelines follow you as you turn the steering wheel. Picture's okay, especially the closer up you are to the backup camera, but as it kind of pans out, 
gets a bit grainy, but volume is here. Click there to mute and you can hold it to power the system down. And then you kind of have a scroll bar here. And if you go into the audio, you can use it as a tune knob like that. Parking sensors can be toggled there. Hazards here. Lane keeping system there. Wireless charging pad. And then to shift the vehicle, grab the lever, reverse, neutral drive. You can put it into manual mode and then you can manually shift using these paddle shifters behind the steering wheel. And that bottom right hand corner of the digital part of the gauge cluster, you can see what gear you're in. Bottle holders are here. Auto stop toggle auto hold, traction control, and then these are your drive modes, and you get my mode, tour, sport, then snow and ice. And you also get animation within the screen so you can kind of see how everything is tuned based on what mode you're in there. There's a center console cubby space. Uh, the SD card was actually removed, so. There's that, USB-C, USB-A port, 12 volt. Let's see if we can pull this up now. Just so you can get a glance at it. All right, while that's loading, there's a sunroof. We can tilt or slide, that's one touch there. Goes all the way back. Then you can close it the same way. Look at the back seat from up here. There's that screen. vanity mirror and then back to the steering wheel blinkers high beams when the low beams are on flash you can toggle the auto high beam there and I like that you get an animation right there letting you know when they're on or off and then we have our rain sense wipers here so one time off auto low high you can adjust that automatic frequency there and then or sensitivity there excuse me and then pull there for the front wiper fluid to the left side of the steering wheel, cruise control. We do get adaptive cruise here, cancel, set the speed there. Gap adjust for the adaptive cruise, voice recognition or mute here, voice recognition. And then we can go through track list, radio station presets here, volume down, volume up. And then we can go through our scroll bar to go through the middle part and then either arrow here to go through the sub menus. So in the settings, we can change our units of measurement as well as our info page options. So I always like to turn the trip two off and then make sure that my fuel economy is on because all this other stuff I usually don't need. And then push button starts here. Finally, here is the key fob with remote start. But next, let's go ahead and take the CT4 Sport out of the road for a test drive. So starting the test drive here in the CT4 Sport, I like this car because it's pretty fun to drive. It's smaller, you have a turbocharged four cylinder engine, you have an eight speed automatic, so you get more of a sporty drive as opposed to one that has too many gears. You know, getting maybe a nine speed or a 10 speed could be a bit much, but I like how this shifts, especially in the manual mode, which I'll put it into now. I'm gonna give it a little pull here. Here we go. So not flooring it by any means, but it gets up to speed so nicely. And it's literally not even, it's not even trying. And that was just in the tour mode. So sport mode kind of livens up the driving experience. You tend to be in a lower gear. It wants to shift faster. I should say it wants to downshift faster. A little bit harsher, but it's just, it's fun to drive. It really is. I'm gonna put it back to the tour mode. Activate the cruise here. 
And again, we do have the adaptive cruise. So though this one is a bit pricey for what it is, you get everything here. You have the sunroof, you don't have ventilated seats, but you still have the heated seats, the adaptive cruise control, and then having the dual power seats in the front, you just get everything. Love having the wireless charging pad as well. But that's one of the reasons the CT4V is so much fun to drive. That car is so powerful, even though it only has a twin turbo V6, but where this car is so tiny, you really get a sports car feel with it. So 47,000, not a bad price for this kind of car, I think. You could do a bit better if there were more options out there, but right now, I mean, what do you have? You can go to a, a Mercedes. You can go to a, you don't really have a Porsche option, but you do have a BMW option, an Audi option, and they're bringing about the same money. Now, some will say that those drive a bit better, they're more performance oriented, but It kind of depends. I mean, you're able to choose your drive modes here. You have adaptive cruise control. You don't have a lane centering option unless you have the Super Cruise, which is any GM vehicle, but it's just for the right customer, they'll be pleased with this car. I wouldn't buy one myself. It's a little too small for me. I can fit in here, but I have people that sit in the back and things of that nature. So there's that but everything else about this car is stellar, especially when it comes to the drivability of it. But I wanna give one more thank you to Cadillac of Murfreesboro for allowing me to review this car today. I'll leave a link below in the description. And if you're looking to find the best price on one of these in your area, just make sure you click on that second link down below. It takes a minute to fill out that information. I'll make sure the local dealers are fighting to get you the best price on one of these or any new vehicle. But $47,000 sounds like a lot for this kind of car. But again, you're really not missing anything except cooled seats, which in these smaller cars isn't really an option that you see a lot of. And I'm thinking of the, the Audis, like A3, A4, the Mercedes C-Class, and then the 3 Series from BMW are gonna be the main competitors and maybe even a two series now, but me personally, I prefer the CT5, but the CT4 again is for that buyer who's not necessarily worried about being able to fit everybody in there. They just want something that's fun to drive, nice to look at, and it's just overall cool. But with all that being said, this will bring me to the end of my review of this 2025 Cadillac CT4 in the sport trim level.